One of the things I do for my health is that I make my own custom fit shoes. Um, some people are rather horrified that I do not wear steel-toed boots around the farm, um, but I'm a lot more functional if I wear moccasins. I have been wearing sneakers and barn boots lately because all of my current moccasins are in really rough shape and need replacing. So I'm having a fairly good day. I think it's time to uh, look through my leather and make a new pair of shoes. So I get materials from a variety of different places. Uh, this is a Vibram soling sheet. This is actually thicker than I prefer, um, but most people would most people would prefer this kind of sole. Um, rubber is also very expensive, so whenever possible I tear the rubber off of an old pair of shoes and reuse it. Um, I do wear use this material for sandals. And I might need to make a new pair of those soon, too, because the my old pair of sandals has lasted me three years, and it's starting to get real thin in a couple spots. So we might do a, a project with that in the near future. This is a hide that someone else couldn't use and gave to me. It is very soft and supple and lovely and I wore me a pair of shoes and enjoyed them for a very short time before they fell apart. Um, if I, there's not a whole lot of it left. Um, if I make another pair of shoes with this, I'm just going to make the uppers um, out of this material and make the lowers out of something stiff like this tooling leather. You can see here that I've cut soles uh, from this tooling leather before. I have a pair of sandals I've made from those and I have attempted some experiments with other types of shoes that have th this leather sh sole, but I haven't got very far with those. So this is upholstery leather. Um, because I'm new at this and leather is very expensive, I often just get what's on sale, um, what I can afford to get at the time. This is not the best leather for shoes. This outer surface is so slick that glue doesn't stick to it, so I can't put rubber soles on this side. So most of the pairs of shoes I've made with it, I've made turned inside out with the suede on the outside, and then I can glue the rubber sole to the suede side. Um, so they don't, it's waterproof, stain proof, so it doesn't take an oil real well to keep the, the leather conditioned, um, and it doesn't breathe very well. So in really hot weather, this is, this is kind of uncomfortable, but it's a nice thing to have on when I'm walking in the rain, because being water resistant, it, um, it keeps my feet, you know, mostly dry. There's some leaks in around the seams, um, but, you know, it has its place. I have a lot of it left, but I really, really don't like this leather, so I'm not using it terribly much. So then we have this leather, which is also an upholstery leather, but it's a lot more supple than, um, than the other one. This was obtained at a local furniture store. We were there buying, it's a, a used furniture store. They, um, they buy used office furniture and they recondition it and resell it. And so we got a decent office chair for my hubby. It's considerably lower, just lower price than, uh, than new. And they'd recently bought out an upholstery shop that was going out of business and had all this leather. And they're like, by the way, are you interested in leather? And we're like, well, yes, we are. We know what to do with leather. So this is officially my husband's hide. It was bought for his birthday. We have cut out a pair of shoes they're almost done, and he was going to do the work to finish them, and I've been stubborn and not done it for him since he said he was going to do it. So we've not actually made uh, anything from this hide yet. But uh, a friend of mine wants a pair of sandals, and we're going to give him some of this leather because we have 
a decent amount of it, and it's it's really like costume leather. It doesn't look durable enough to be something that I'm going to want to make up a pair of shoes that's going to last for months. Um, I'm guessing this would wear through in two or three months, and then I'd have to make another pair, new pair of shoes, which is a lot of work to go through. So, I have those choices that there's trade-offs on all of them. So, I decided to spoil myself. And this was on sale, but it was still pretty pricey. And we're not doing that fabulously well at the moment. So, it was a bit of a... I, I consulted the husband, and we sat down and did some math before we actually bought it. So this is uh, Bison Hide 5 ounce Raisin Colored. At the sale price, there was only one choice for color, but I like this color, so I was perfectly happy with that. Um, they say it is specially tanned to bring out the beautiful range marks. So you can see there's a, a lot of uh, small defects in the leather. I'll have to be careful when I cut out the boots to make sure that none of those defects are, are weaknesses. I mean, I don't care if there's just a cosmetic issue, but if you put, let's say you are doing a design that laces up and you have laces pulling across this defect, that's a that's generally going to be a weakness and it's going to come apart. So I don't want these to appear anywhere near a seam. Ideally, they'd end up on the sole of the shoe, which I'm going to cover with rubber anyway, which will will strengthen it. Um, but if it appears on the side or on the top of my foot, it's not too big of a deal. I just really don't want it near a seam or near the heel of the shoe. But it's five ounces, so it's reasonably thick. Um, this, this pair will probably last me a year, um, if I wear sandals sometimes during the summer. It should get me through, uh, through a winter. So, I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm, mm, I'm enjoying that new leather smell, too. It's a little bit chemically, but it's a little bit natural, and it's just... It just represents the richness and luxury, you know? Sometimes a smell isn't really so good on its own, but it has memories attached to it. This video's already getting kind of long for, you know, the kind of stuff I normally do. But I just wanted to go around the room. Um, here's my cordage collection. Um, often make laces out of more modern materials rather than going through the trouble of cutting leather laces or buying expensive leather laces. It's a little scrap here of leather lace, but that's not long enough to do much with. Um, my patterns, most of these patterns I made myself either through starting with some online information and then doing multiple revisions. Like this one has you know, the year I developed that pattern. Some of them will say Mark II or Mark III of a particular revision. Um, your feet will change over time, especially if you switch from regular modern confinement shoes to moccasins and sandals, your toes are going to spread. So the first few years you make moccasins, you need to um, retake your measurements and redo your pattern every time. So this is a new toy I bought myself. Um, you can't put pins in leather. And so I thought I'd give these clips a try. That might make some of my work easier. I've tried a stitching pony, but the, the pony I got wasn't really suitable for the type of work was really designed to hold smaller pieces, so we're going to give those craft clips a try. And this is a new soling material for me. It's more flexible than that Vibram soling sheet I showed you a minute ago. 
Oh, the Vibram Soling Sheet is 4mm Cherry, if you want to uh, pick something up like that. Uh, it's a, pretty much the golden standard among the Harache crowd. Because it's just stiff enough to hold its shape as a sandal, but it still gives you some ground feel. So this is a rubber soling sheet, also known as crepe. Uh, this is three millimeter thick. We'll see how it does. You know, you learn by trying. Here's my collection of tools. Uh, I've got punches and awls and needles and ball of sewing wax and knives and groovers. If we, um, I'll show you those in more detail if I do a, a project video. Just which ones I use, I'll show you. And this was one of my recent purchases as well. I somehow thought I was buying a book. Um, I think I added two things to my cart and then hastily deleted the wrong one. I'm not really impressed by the Scout moccasin pattern. Um, I had a pair of those long, long time ago, and I've made a similar shoe. The main problem is the shoe tying across the arch of the foot like this. Um, if you tie this tight enough to keep the shoe secure, it's going to go right across some nerves and blood vessels on the top of your foot. And it's really not comfortable for long-term use. I mean, it's fine if you tie it loosely for just walking around camp. Um, you know, if you, if you hike in boots and then want something more loose for around camp at the end of the day, that's fine. For all day use, you have to tie them tight enough to stay on your feet when you're walking, and it's no good. Um, all of the historically accurate marks and patterns tie around the ankle, as you can see here. Many of them um, have these van these uh, side flaps, I forget what the technical name is for them right now, fold up around the leg and the laces go around the leg and tie up tie up the top. And that very securely holds the shoe onto the leg, onto the foot, without putting any pressure whatsoever across the, across the uh, vamp of the shoe. This is just made snug enough to not flap around as you walk. So, um, if you're new to making shoes, a pattern pack like this might be good for you. Um, however, I'm going to demonstrate why I make my own shoes. Let's get this out of the shade. According to the size chart, from the length of my foot, my foot is a size 8. So let's go ahead and put my foot on that outline of that size 8. Now, most Europeans make the toe pointed and stick out beyond the edge of the toe, so that's normal. What's not really normal is these toes here. Uh, whenever I put on conventionally shaped shoes, I get blisters and calluses, and this toe starts tucking up underneath, and it's really not good for my walk. I've got enough physical issues, I need all the help I can get, and fully functioning feet is part of that help. So, I'm going to use that Inca boot pattern as, a, as an inspiration, um, but I will not be cutting out exactly from the pattern. You can see here I've got a blister right now that's healing, because um, I wore sneakers in the rain the other day. That's just... Fact of life. Um, so, I'm not going to get into today's project. We've all, Ah! I've been missing that! Clyde's Garden Planner. Completely off topic for the rest of this video, but I highly recommend it. It's uh, very good for basic timing planning for your garden. Check it out. Clyde's Garden Planner. 
All right, what do we got here? Oh, this, this was a nice surprise. I, two summers ago, spent a good deal of money at, uh, let's see, oh, yeah, the URL's right on here, Catskill Moccasins. Um, in order to order Catskill Moccasins, you have to go to a local Renaissance fair where they have a booth, and they have people there who will take a mold of your foot and send that to, um, and send that to an artisan who will make your shoes. Uh, so these are completely custom. They are expensive. There is a year-long wait to actually get an artisan to make your shoes. Um, but for me, that was worth it. But the surprise to me was that they sent me my pattern back with my shoes. Now, uh, they mostly do this for warranty purposes. Um, in that if part of my shoe wears out and I send it back in for warranty repair, they will, um, want me to send in the pattern piece so that they can cut a new piece of leather that will fit the rest of the shoe. So this is the original tracing that the fitter took of my feet. These are pattern pieces that were made by the artisan. These are the original molds of my feet. Uh, what they do is they put a nice, thick, loose sock on your foot, and then they tape it every way. Um, we, might, uh, we might at some point see a masking tape last demonstration from me, because I've done something very similar to this. I use uh, plastic shopping bags because socks are generally stretched and they contract again when your foot's not inside them. So uh, I think they molded both of my feet. So, but they only kept one of them. So this is the, the vamp pattern. The vamp is the top of your foot and the, to and the top of the toes and going up into the tongue. And this is the heel section. It goes around the back. And this is from the sole. Now the the artist does take a little bit of liberty with styling and practical practical curves. They're easier for her to sew. Him or her to sew. They have multiple artisans, so you don't know which one you're going to get at the time that you order. So you can see there's some little scraps here cut off from that original mold, and they, they save everything um, to show the show where those discrepancies were. So that's I I was pleasantly surprised to to get this pattern. Um, yeah, here again is the vamp that is based off of the mold of my foot. There we go. That way they've added a seam allowance around the edge and they've done some styling as well. And you can see from, it's a regular old gray toe sock. And here you can see they tra you can see the tracing of the mold on the cardboard. And the seam allowance was added here. And these here would be index marks for where those line up. Oh no, these line up on the sole. Where's the sole piece? Here we go, here's the sole piece. So these index marks indicate where that's going to line up on the sole as it's sewed on. The camera doesn't have quite as good as an angle as my eyes do at the moment. So, I, I, uh, I'm not sure what the legalities are uh, of me 
making a shoe from this pattern. I think because it's custom work that I paid for the design work that I am free to use it. Um, the general design that my custom piece was based off of is very common. Um, I don't think it is, is exclusively owned by this company. If I do make a new pair of shoes from this, I will double check with the company that I do have legal rights to use the pattern first. But, so that's it for today. I need to decide if I'm going to make an Inca boot or if I'm going to go look for my basic moccasin Mark III pattern or if I'm going to make a new pattern today. But, uh, looking forward to it. New shoes. Yay! I just wanted to make another quick note about the uh, Scout Moccasin. There is a similar shoe uh, that is historical um, and is comfortable. It's called the Pucker Toe Moccasin. Um, this, the vamp here is slightly smaller. The sole comes and wraps up around further and is even more puckery here. Uh, but the main difference is the method of attachment. Instead of having this little chase here for the, uh, for the laces, there's a full-size flap that comes all the way down to the ground. And uh, you can put your string through that underneath that flap and tie it against your ankle here. Or you can turn the flap up if, you know, you're going through some deep wet grass or mud or something and you want a little bit more protection. You turn that flap up and use longer laces and you go around that a few times and tie it against your shin. So, um, if you end up with a scout mock pattern, the scout mock pattern or a scout mock pattern kit, um, all is not lost. Go ahead and make the bottom, the sole and the vamp the way it is. But modify the this here to be a longer strip um, that's going to suit you better. And don't tie it across the top of your foot. Tie it up against your ankle.